is all adoration please signify whether the audio level is good enough whether you're hearing uh, signify and then uh, destiny will monitor it to check how it's going we bless the lord for you we thank you for coming along with us on this study of course 111 this is not something that is of interest to the religious world as a matter of fact religious leaders they get angry i mean angry if it's possible to shut down this commission it is because of the revelation in this course course 111 because it goes to the heart of what christian religion has done to divert people away from the purpose of the father and today by the grace of the lord we're going to look at lesson 20 the most radical proposition to humans is the gospel of the kingdom It's the most radical that the lord has demanded of humans and we're going to see why in a moment let us pray lord by your spirit have your way grant us understanding do that which only you can do through your word as holy spirit breathes upon it the breath of life let yeshua be lifted up and draw us to where he is in yeshua's name we pray amen brothers and sisters the average pastor in christendom operates from a, pra- a place of inherent disadvantage, both as a believer in the denominational church and in the Bible college or seminary where he or she attended, that person has been fed a diet that is essential about fostering and advancing Christian religion, also known as churchianity. So success is framed in terms of planting the church, growing the church, and the truth is this yeshua has not sent any of us to go and build his church for him he said in matthew 16 18 that he will build his church the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and so we need to understand what did he send us to do he sent us to represent him he sent us to continue declaration of his kingdom message he sent us to go and make disciples of all and to likewise engage in reproduction of those disciples and encourage them to reproduce after kind. And it's important that we understand that the Lord clearly has some scriptures that constitute our mandate. One of them is Matthew 24, 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations, then the end shall come. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, go therefore and teach all nations, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of Father and of Son and of Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things which I have so have commanded you. And then in Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the utmost parts of the earth. So, what he sent us to do is radically different from what people are doing today. Every pastor wants to have a church, a big church, a big organization, a big building, a large crowd, and they rally around you. And you are their mini God. You are the be all and end all, and they bring you all the money in the world, and you stack it all up. Brothers and sisters, we need to know what the gospel is not. It is not to meet a man or woman of God. It is not to join a church or denomination. It is not to become successful in life. It is not to achieve financial breakthrough. It is not to to receive healing or deliverance or any such thing. That is not the gospel. You know what? The Lord can bless you with those things in the course of your walk with him. But those are not the gospel. What then is the radical gospel of the kingdom? What makes it radical? Number one, I want you to take note. You'll be tested on this. What the radical gospel of the kingdom is. Number one, it is an invitation for a human to reject the dominion of Satan, of sin, of the world, and of self over their lives. These are four gods that rule the life of almost everyone on earth. Is either ruled by Satan or sin? or the world, or self, or combination of three or four. These are gods. So it's an invitation to reject their rulership. Number two, 
is an invitation to die to self. As Yeshua required in John in Matthew 16, 24 to 26, and Galatians 2.20 talks about, and Galatians 6.14 talks about an invitation to die to self. If you are going to ever be part of the kingdom. Three, it is a demand for believers to accept the reality that with a new birth experience, they become saints of Elohim who need to walk in righteousness consciousness, embrace the identity in Yeshua, and grow in grace. That though they may struggle with some issues or in growth in some areas of behavior or character, or whatever, though they may be experiencing those issues, these are issues of growth in process. That doesn't make them sinners who are needing redemption. No, they've been redeemed from Satan and sin. Number four, it is an invitation, therefore, to enthrone Yeshua consciously and intentionally as sovereign ruler in the heart of those who believe. Enthrone him means let him rule, let him reign. And so five, the proof of submission to sovereign rule of Yeshua is total dependency on Holy Spirit for empowerment, direction, and leading. You do nothing except by Holy Spirit. He leads, he guides. As many as are led by him, they are the sons of Elohim. Number six, further proof of the reign of Yeshua, that is the kingdom within, is deliverance from carnality. <laughs> what is carnality? Carnality is the motion of the old nature which is at war against spirituality. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. The carnal mind is enmity against Elohim. It is not subject to the law of Elohim, nor can be. So it is when you come to that place where you are delivered from carnality. And then that's what Romans 8, 5 to 9 says. And then number seven, the outcome of these processes is an individual whose spirit soul and body is no longer attracted to the world system, the world values, whether it's fashion of the world, it's things that make people excited in the world because your kingdom is not of this world. The things that move them is not what moves you. They are moved by what they see. They are moved by external things, the, the, the brand of your wristwatch, the brand of the shirt you wear, the suit you wear. They are moved by all those things, the shoe you wear, the, the eyeglass you put on. Those things move them. For you, who is a kingdom citizen ambassador, the Bible says that the kingdom you are part of is not about food, it's not about drink, it's not about what you wear, it's not about anything external, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you are delivered from the world. And as a matter of fact, 1 John chapter 2, 15 to 17 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any love the world, it doesn't matter the title, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. If any love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If one is ruled by worldly values and driven by the lust for things of the world, the love of the Father jumps out of the window because all of them will pass away. And he who dwells in the Lord and allows the Lord to dwell in your heart will abide forever. So number eight, it is therefore a gospel or good news of deliverance from the dark kingdom of Satan and conveyance into the kingdom of righteousness ruled by Yeshua. That's what we were told in Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14. So that means they have switched loyalty from Satan, from sin, from world, from self to Yeshua. That means you are in a different kingdom. We are in the same world, but two kingdoms are operating, the kingdom of the world system, the kingdom of Elohim. The tragedy of Christian religion is that people claim to be in church, but they are held by all the things that hold down other people. And so, men and brethren, let's now expound on this radical gospel. It is an invitation to encounter just one personality, one personality. The Father has set in the earth rim. Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus the Messiah, who alone is the solution to the sin issue. 
we alone, we should hand over the keys of our life to him. To preach this radical gospel to modern man is an invitation to be scorned, to be abused, to be deemed backward by religious people, yet this is the only gospel. There is no other gospel. Every other thing is religion writ large. The king demanded and still demands from all humans, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. He's knocking at the door of the heart. And men and brethren, he asks for a change of life. He asks for a change of direction. And he asks for a change of ownership based on his grace. There is a clear invitation for a switch of loyalty arising from serving Satan, seeing the flesh, to that of trusting him alone who paid the price for our deliverance. And it is coming to a place where we, it is not to partner with him, you know, to break the hand of Satan in a little way, but to partner with him in a total way. You take his side. Moses asked the question, who is on the Lord's side? And the sons of Levi came out. They were a type of what will happen. The Lord is asking in the realm of the Spirit, who is on the Lord's side? If you are for him, be for him. Be for him wholly. Brothers and sisters, Adam, the second Adam, Yeshua, took our place at the cross and everything that was against us and contrary to us, he took them away and nailed them to the cross and said, it is finished. And so believing in him, the good news, when proclaiming the power of Holy Spirit, it has an impact on those who are appointed to salvation. You hear it, if you are appointed to salvation, there will be a response to the word. Because the, the spirit of Elohim pierces into the deepest layers of our soul. In the book of John 1, 12 to 13, it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of Elohim. Even to them that believe on him, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Elohim. So the power, it comes from him. Brothers and sisters, that is why he made it so simple, that if you believe in your heart, confess with your tongue, you are saved. But you know what? What religion does is to mess up that salvation. You are saved. The religion keeps you in carnality. 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 Whereas you are supposed to be inducted into the things of the Spirit right from day one. Right from the day you surrendered your life to the Lord, you are supposed to come to a place where you are grown in the truth. From the very first thing you are taught, and every day is added to, added to, you get to know about the king, you get to know about the kingdom, you get to know about his demand on you, you get to know about what you can do to walk in the fullness of his grace. And that is why we need to understand what we ought to do. We're going to show you a few things in this lesson. One of them is the fourfold legal basis in which Yeshua demands 100%, not 90%, not 99, 100% of our devotion, of our commitment, our heart, our mind, our will, our emotion, everything in us, 100% handed over to him. What is the basis of that? There are four bases, four. Number one, because of election. Election. The first basis on which Elohim demands for us total, complete devotion, submission, is that before the foundation of this world, he elected us. And that is what Christian religion does not teach. It does not because Christian religion teaches. What does Christian religion teach? It teaches you go and look for God, look for God. So people find, look for God, look for God, look for God. And because it is not the way. The honest truth is that the gospel of the kingdom, God is the one who looked for us. The Bible tells us very clearly that in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Yeshua, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Yeshua Hamashiach. Verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. 
read the whole of that chapter. It's awesome. He elected us. And brothers and sisters, that is why he put our name in the Lamb's book of life that was slain before the foundation of this world, according to Revelation 13 verse 8. You know, people tend to look at Yeshua in terms of 2,000 years ago when he went to the cross. But before then, thousands of years before then, before Adam was created, then Yeshua knew, Elohim, the, the Godhead knew that Adam and Eve would miss it. They knew that humanity would miss it because he gave them a will. And so what happens right in front of the foundation of the world? Yeshua volunteered himself to be the lamb that will be slain. And that time he volunteered himself is the time the Lord, by his grace, had made a decision concerning you and I. You know, no, people are scared to talk about this, but that's what the Bible says. In other words, it's actually the Lord who looked for us. And it's he. If you understand this, then you understand what grace is. If you don't understand this, you cannot understand grace. Brothers and sisters, it is so important to know that because he chose us, he owes us. He yearns for us to cease from dead works of rituals with our heart, which is the mainstay of religion. Rather, he wants us to receive his faith by faith, his grace, not just to be saved, but also to be processed into the fullness of the divine purpose. And that's so important for us to understand. In Romans 11, verse 5 and 6, he says, Even so then, at this present time, there is a remnant according to election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, great work is no more work. So we got to understand the principle of grace in Ephesians chapter 2. Men and brethren, that we were in darkness, we were sin. The Father had undertaken because of election. Yeshua came, paid the price, shed his blood at the cross, and the Father orchestrated it. You didn't just hear the gospel. The Father orchestrated somebody to share it with you. You turn on television, you didn't plan to, you turn it on anyway, and a preacher who is anointed presented the truth. The Lord set it all up. Even to receive what he set up, he also infused in you the faith to believe. When you have time, read Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 10. So it's all by election. The Father's grace was at work before the foundation of the world. And since we we're born, His grace was at work. I mean, looking back at my own life, I will have perished. I will have gone in all ways. Looking back now, I can see that as early as when I was just 10, 11, the Lord had begun to reveal Himself to me. I remember things that happen now. I didn't know it then. Looking back, even the choices, even the wickedness I saw that drove me away from religion, it was all the hand of Elohim. The time I went into a Christian religious uh, cathedral and all I saw was idolatry, even as an unbeliever, and I was revolved with the idolatry around the images and the sacrifices to images and the bowing down towards images. And I said, no, if this is this, no way for me. And for more than 11 years, I didn't go to church. It was all the Lord until the day he revealed himself. Even at that, he's still been processing, chucking out that junk. That junk, that junk, that junk. Listen, the more you know about Elohim, the more you appreciate grace. And I'm not talking about cheap grace. I'm not talking about this cheap f grace that is no grace that makes people to stay in iniquity and remain there. I'm talking about the real grace of the Lord. It processes. It leads us into deeper realms of understanding. It leads us into total consecration because he orchestrated it all he owns us number two he owns us because he created us what you create you own he created us so we have his trademark is upon us you may not know it ecclesiastes 12 1 says remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the day evil days come not nor the years draw near when thou shalt say have no pleasure in them the father created us 
Lord, you know, we got to understand that. We didn't just happen. We, we didn't just evolve. He created us. He owns us. And not only did he create us, he provides for us the things we need. Matthew 7, 7 to 11 tells us. And Lamentations 2, 22, 23 says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. You didn't get that job you got because you were wiser than others, you were more knowledgeable than others. You got it entirely because the Elohim who created you, he packaged it for you. He packaged you for it. Amen and brethren. Number three reason why he demands 100% submission of us is that he redeemed us. Yeshua paid the price at the cross. We were the ones to die. The soul that sinned shall perish. But he went and took his our place at the cross. And by taking our place, taking the heat, the bullet, the crucifixion, the death we deserve, he took it on our behalf. The life we now live is not our own, but it's his own. And we need to understand, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, that we know what? Our body should be his temple. Why? Because we are bought with a price. The blood he shed is the blood of redemption. When you redeem something, you own that thing. That thing doesn't own itself. We are redeemed people, he owns us. Then, number four reason why he demands 100% ownership is that he placed our name in the last book of life when he redeemed us. He placed it there. And because he placed it there, he has undertaken, if we cooperate with him, to get us there. Philippians 4, 3. I entreat thee also, yoke fellow, through yoke fellow, rehab those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. The names are in the book of life. Then in Revelation 3 verse 5, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Revelation 21 verse 7, uh, 27, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or make it a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. It is he that wrote it. When he forgave us our sin, his blood blotted out our name from the book of death, and he scribed it into the book of life. And because of that, the Lord wants us to walk in the reality of the understanding of what happened at Calvary Cross. We are translated from darkness to light, from kingdom ruled by Satan to kingdom ruled by Yeshua. So handing over 100% of our lives is the barest minimum he expects. Without that, one is not in the kingdom. If you hand over 80% and you retain 20%, 20% is an idol. You hand over 90% to retain 10% is an idol. You hand over 99% and retain 1%, that 1% you retain is an idol. You hand over 99.9999% and retain to yourself 0.0001%, that 0.001% is an idol. It is a portal for the enemy to creep back into your life. And the Lord wants us to know that by his grace, he wants us to dwell in him. He is our resting place, his will. When he rules in us and we submit, struggle ceases. We are no longer struggle. It becomes a miraculous lifestyle, an inside-out lifestyle of abiding in him, who is the true vine, and he abides in us, his word abides in us. So our growth, our righteousness, our holiness is no longer a struggle to tick box, do not, do not this, you know, there was a church, I've told you this before, in Africa. You and your wife are coming from your home. Your, beard, your wife, very dear to you. You are intimate. You are holding hands. You came out of the car holding your hands. If you get into the doorway, into the church, the ushers expect you to release her hand, go to the men's section. She goes to the women's section. And the religion thinks it's the word of holiness. 
the war of holiness, you don't shake the hand of a woman. Some people, the war of holiness, so many rituals, so many do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts. People try this, try that. They try seven, they get, they fail three, they try nine, they fail one, and it doesn't work. People are weary. The Lord said, no, surrender all to me. Let me take over. Let me rule your life. Let me be your king. Let me be your ruler. Let me, by my spirit, direct you in all things. Struggle will cease. Then you begin to bear fruit. And so the, for that reason, what are the four instruments he uses to bring this to pass? What we have just looked at. What are the four instruments? Remember I told you that there are four bases on which he owns us. Then what are the four instruments? Number one is voice of the king through ministration of Holy Spirit. The Lord is a speaking Elohim. Yeshua speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. So if we come to a place where we do not allow our five senses to rule us, but his voice to rule us. The Bible says in Romans 8, 12 to 16, verse 14 says, As many as are led by the Spirit of Elohim, they are the sons of Elohim. Every day of your life, learn the holy habit, practice the holy habit of trying to know his voice concerning anything. Don't just go into things. Hear his. If you climb your ear, you'll hear. If you're too busy, you will not hear. If you're careless, you will not hear. But if you cry your ear and say, I will do nothing until I hear from the Lord concerning anything, begin to practice it on little things, it becomes part of you. When you have time, you can read Romans 8, 12 to 16. Number two, what the written word says of any situation. This is, comes to another level where it's not just what Holy Spirit says to you, the Lord has also given us his word, preserved at great price. People like William, you know, um, Tyndale, people like John Wycliffe. These men were martyred for daring to make the, valuable, the Bible available to us. So learn to study the word intentionally. Study it. Therein is the word of life. The instruction of life. Study it until it's made flesh in you. Study it until it's part of you and whatever you need to do Ask yourself, what does the word say? What does the word say? Does the word permit you to go into this cheap divorce? Does the word permit you to go and marry anybody you want without checking with the word? Does the word permit you to take on any job because you need money? So any job that appears, you take it on. Is there, are, there, are there barriers and boundaries created by the word that should determine what you can do or not do? Let the, what the written word says. Determine what to do. Yeshua, when faced with a devil tempting him, he used it as written. If you don't know the word, how can you know what is written? How can you respond it is written? Number three, the voice of a lively conscience. The Lord has allowed every individual to have a lively conscience. If you are born again, the conscience is supposed to be alive. When you have time, read uh, Acts 24, 16. Read Romans chapter 9, verse 1. Read Romans 13, 3. Read 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19. Read Hebrews 9, 14. Hebrews 10, 22. Hebrews 13, 18. It is important to know, brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to have a lively conscience. If we learn to obey the Lord, what he tells us to do, we're not going to have problem. Our conscience will be alive. And anything you want to do, the conscience can blink, begin to blink, blink, blink. First, an amber light that tells the Lord is not there. And a red light definitely don't go there. And if you don't obey the voice of the conscience, if you disobey the first time, second time, third time, you can shut down the voice of conscience. And Holy Spirit will not be able to speak to you. You can begin to go to the wrong way and you continue in the wrong way. So that's why it's very dangerous to have a negative conscience. Titus 1.15, 1 Timothy 4.2. The fourth way the Lord uses to grow us is his grace. The gospel is a gospel of grace. It makes a bold demand on us that, listen, everything we need is all by grace. Learn to come to that place of grace. Learn to come to that place where you realize the power of grace. 
It's by grace we are saved through faith. And everything else is by grace. Everything else is by grace. If you will embrace his grace, then you will grow in grace. If you embrace his grace, then you grow from grace to grace. And the fifth final thing I want to say is the power of the blood. The power of the blood cleanses. If you go wrong, let the blood do a blotting out of that thing. And that's why it goes with repentance. The blood and repentance go together. The only way to get the power of the blood working for you is repentance. And if you are not able to repent, the blood is flowing all around you and nothing will happen. And so I want to say this to you, brothers and sisters. The gospel of the kingdom is the most radical proposition. It's asking human beings to abandon their former gods, their former lords, their former rulers, and take on a new ruler, absolute ruler, Yeshua Hamashiach, and to embrace the fourfold ownership he has on us and to give him 100%, not 99%, of everything in us all the time. And if any time we find ourselves short in any matter, no matter how tiny, even is by thought, no action, or by word, no action, or by attitude, no action, the moment you discover with a lively conscience that you stepped out of the way to take a plunge into the pool of the blood and receive cleansing and purification and embrace justification so that you can walk in righteousness, consciousness, all the time. I urge you today, we know we just try to summarize something that you need to study the teaching notes that will be released in the next 30 minutes or so is released. Please study it intensely, even if you're in the master class, even if you're not in the master class, it will be posted on Global School of Ministry. Study this teaching note, take the scriptures and prayerfully this weekend, Pray them in, and the Lord will do what only Him can do in our lives. We're going to pray now and make some announcements. Father in heaven, we know you love us. We know you are orchestrating something that will cause us to embrace the gospel of the kingdom and dump religiosity and all these isms and that divide us up and enable us to walk in the light of your truth 24-7. Have your way. Glorify Yeshua. Thank you because we know you've answered. Transform, transition all your people. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, this weekend, remember, tomorrow, Pastor Grace will be here to give us Digging Deep series on Sunday morning also. And by the grace of the Lord in the afternoon, both of us will be teaching, and I'll be teaching lesson 21. By the grace of the Lord this evening, I will be with IMF in Zimbabwe, it will be on Zoom, you know, the Zoom we use here and also on Facebook Live. So IMF in Zimbabwe tonight and tomorrow also afternoon and evening. Be with us to, you know, impact. Let's have fellowship and communion and see what the Lord will tell us. Have a blessed day. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Grace. Bye-bye.